Hi, my name is Leilani, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my homeschool curriculum picks for my up and coming seventh grader. I'm actually really looking forward to teaching seventh grade this year. I actually was a middle school teacher. I was a middle school teacher, former public and private school middle teacher, and I also do homeschool evaluations for the state of Florida, and I am a homeschool mom of four of my wonderful, wonderful, beautiful kids. So I'm just, I'm just going to jump right in and get started with the curriculum so you guys can get some ideas of what may or may not work for your homeschool, your homeschooling. <laughs> So I'm going to start with language arts. Well, first of all, I'm a huge IEW fan, which if you follow my channel, you know I am because I can't speak more highly of them. They have pretty much have made me much more confident when it comes to knowing that my child is learning how to write properly. My weak subject of teaching is, is writing until I started doing IEW because now I feel like writing is starting to become my strength and it has built a lot of confidence for me as a homeschool mom and also my son. So my seventh grader is not a reluctant writer. My uh, up and coming fifth grader is, and I did a video on that, so if you wanna hear me talk about his experience you know, with IW, you can check out that video, but my seventh grader loves writing. That is one of his things. He has been writing stories, he wants to write novels, he loves it. He's actually been talking a little bit here and there about doing journalism. So IEW is something that he actually thrives off of. We have been using structure and style. We have also done some of the thematic un unit studies, which I also also love but this year we're going to be doing structure and style year two level B now with structure and style the way it works let me show you I have not opened it yet it's it pretty much comes with the I know what to expect I'll open it right now <laughs> okay so basically with IEW, you're gonna have levels A, B, and C. So level A is gonna be your elementary school, level B is gonna be your middle school, and level C is going to be your high school. It doesn't matter where you start them, like you can do an eighth grader, year one, but you wanna stick with the level B. So you always wanna start at year one, you don't wanna skip over year one and do year two. It's not gonna make much of a difference because IEW, the way it is written, it kind of builds on itself. It's a classical model of education, and if you're familiar with the classical education style, you know it's done by the three different groupings. This is what it looks like inside. They get a folder. And inside the folder, there are some sheets as well as a teacher manual. And those sheets are actually what they're gonna be building their binder with for the whole the whole year. And some of them are little worksheets that they're gonna write on for keyword outlines. Some of them are rubrics that they're gonna use when they're writing their paper. Some of them are like worksheets that they wanna put up on the wall or have in their folder so it's, it's accessible for them to look at and reference. They give them on the DVDs or the streaming service, they tell them exactly what to do. Now this, you know, structure style is very hands-off. A lot of parents are asking me, if they should watch the videos with their kids. And to be honest, do it. Watch the videos with their kids. You can even go online and there's some stuff on YouTube that you can actually watch that will help you understand structure and style and the style of IEW and how it works very easily. Now, once you get the hang of IEW, I will say this, it's gonna become much, much easier for you and you're not gonna, you, you don't wanna go back. <laughs> to really anything else. Yeah, I did lots of videos on IEW. I'm gonna go ahead and link them in the iCards as well as the description box below. Let me show you the teacher manual. And so if you're familiar with IEW, the units are gonna have the same topics no matter what year or level you're at. They're just, it repeats over and over and over again and it's just building upon itself from one year to the next. And this one's exciting because if I look at some of the topics that they're gonna be doing, uh, Frederick Douglass or Harriet Tubman, there's a story with the king and the ant or Genghis Khan and the hawk, Neil Arm Armstrong or Sally Ride. So it's you either write on one or the other, so they're giving you options. Seagull or Storm, this looks really cool. Oh, there's one on Nikola Tesla. My kids love the Tesla. It's it's, I know it's not the car Tesla, but he'll, he'll enjoy writing about Tesla just because it's the name. Do they have Elon Musk because my kids would die? No, I'm sorry, my, my son's obsessed with Tesla. I'm, I'm personally obsessed with money that I save by not buy, buying a Tesla. Moving on, let's talk about how IEW can be a full curriculum. And so we're doing structure and style, which is writing. Um, we are also gonna be doing fix-it grammar. 
Now, fix it grammar, we are doing town mouse and country mouse. My son, he's really good with grammar, so I feel like at this point it's just reminding him what adjectives are and adverbs are and using the structure and style to build those stories with the, the grammatical elements. And this is just a quick, this will be just kind of like a quick review. This year we did some diagramming, a lot of diagramming, and so he understands sentence structure. Like I said, at this point it's just it's just a matter of reviewing and this this will be easy. He'll breeze through it. This will be one of those things that he sits down and does for 15 minutes a day and then psh, move it on. It's also going to help him a lot with his cursive because in this there is copy work. So for those of you that are looking for a full language arts curriculum, like I said, this has it. You got the copy work, you got the grammar. The only thing IEW does not have is diagramming and that's why we went back last year and did some diagramming. I feel like he's got that at this point, so it's not going to make a difference if there's grammar or not with IEW. IEW does have a spelling curriculum. We've done it before. It's great. But my son has some really good, strong foundations in spelling, so we're going to continue using soaring with spelling. He's going to be in level 8. He's ahead of the game. He's in 7th grade and he's doing level 8. And like I said, that is because we did do Phonic Zoo, but also because we did the curriculum all about spelling for the level 1 and level 2, which was suggested by IEW. And he has a great foundation in spelling. And so Soaring with Spelling is one that you do the test on the first day. You got three days of one sheet activities. And then on the last day, you do the final test. Words that you don't get right, they carry over to the next lesson. Very straightforward very independent learning, except for the spelling test, traditional learning. So we're gonna be using that simple 15 minutes with grammar, 15 minutes with spelling, that's 30 minutes, that's very hands-off, and there's my language arts curriculum. I am making it a point to put him at a, in a literature class at the co-op, and now I feel like he's at that age where he needs to start discussing things with other students in the classroom setting, and I like the teacher that's teaching it. Plus, at our co-op, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of middle schoolers, and I feel like this is just, it's just a great opportunity for him to be in a literature class at the co-op, so that's what we're gonna do for literature. Now let's talk Spanish. Like many people, I truly believe that Spanish should be considered a core curriculum. Well, not just Spanish, but foreign language. Math is a core curriculum, but your kids don't usually do higher level math like Algebra 2 and Calculus in everyday life, do they? But if they know a foreign language and they live in a country where a lot of people speak that language other than the native language, they're going to use it almost every day. It's more opportunities for networking, building businesses, building relationships, just more people more opportunities. So this will be our second year working with Homeschool Spanish Academy. Super excited. We love them. We love our teacher. It keeps us accountable, pushes us through. Oh, they're amazing. I have a whole video on them. I don't speak Spanish. They do and they can teach my son and I'm also behind the scenes trying to learn language as well. It's a, for some reason they're learning it a lot faster than me. <laughs> I'm starting to understand it. I understand it better than I can speak it. And, and they can definitely understand it. And they're talking with their Awella like a lot more. I am gonna stick a link down in the description box below. They actually have an opportunity for you to try a free class. And that link is in the description box below. Trust me, it, if you have a high schooler, or middle school, or even an elementary schooler that you want to start learning Spanish, it's gonna take a weight off your back. Also, they have a YouTube channel, and you can find a lot of videos that will coincide with the lesson that you're working on. You can even go back and use those videos as review from previous lessons to just kind of keep things fresh. They have a whole series on their YouTube channel. It's called, this Spanish immersion series which we love they have a playlist with that the YouTube channel is actually called Spanish Academy TV I'll stick a link to that channel as well so we use all those nice little resources yes we do also use some resources outside of homeschool Spanish Academy such as YouTube <laughs> YouTube we watch YouTube videos uh, we watch Basho and friends butterfly Spanish to do some reviews but our core curriculum, our core studies, our foundation is through Homeschool Spanish Academy and it is well worth it. It is a core subject in our household. And honestly, we are just, we're going to keep going straight through until they can go no longer. And at that point, we're hoping to be fluent or semi-fluent to the point where we can now just start reading and talking and using other things as resources to keep that Spanish in our brains. 
Math, let's talk math. So, my son, like I said, he is a writer. He's actually looking at journalism. Before that, he wanted to be the President of the United States. Uh, he does really like playing Minecraft, which isn't a lot of writing, but I mean, what boy doesn't like to play Minecraft? So math is something that he needs something a little fun to get him motivated. So we have been using teaching textbooks. Teaching textbooks is definitely fun. It has somebody else other than me teaching him math. If he gets it wrong, then they show him how to do it correctly. You can't cheat with the 4.0. You have to actually do the problem and type in the numbers and have the decimal in the right place. It's a great curriculum, we love it, and he's just gonna continue through with teaching textbooks. And I forgot this with language, it's not really language arts, it's kind of a little extracurricular here and there, but he's gonna be working, we're gonna do this together. It's gonna be a mom and son thing. It's called How to Write a Story, an Instructional Guide for Understanding and Teaching Basic Story Writing. It is through IEW. And since we're on this, you know, literature kick, I am also going to be doing a unit study with actually all of my kids on poetry. And this is an Usborne book. Yes, I, got, I think it's a hidden gem. I do, I think it's a hidden gem because nobody told me about this book. But when I saw it, I was like, we haven't done much poetry, so I wanna do it. But this book actually like turned out to be amazing. So it actually teaches you about the different types of poems and then they actually give you ideas on how to write those different types of poems. So here's one, so here's another one. This is a what am I? They give you an example, and then you have to write your own. Here's about sonnets, information about it, and then they have you write your own. As in true Usborne fashion, super, super colorful, super fun, lots of great ideas. We're gonna, like I said, this is gonna be a unit study and we're gonna do a couple of these a day, spend some time reading with each other, maybe do some poetry tea time. I don't know if the, the boys will be into that, but we're just, we're gonna have fun with this. Another core subject, I consider it a core subject, is music. So I tell all my kids, they have to be playing some kind of instrument. And if they don't want to play or have an instrument that they really wanna play, it defaults to piano. I just think piano is it's just a great instrument to default to. Now I am teaching them a lot of the piano. I taught, taught them a lot of the foundations in the beginning. And at this point, I have started using Simply Piano. Now, Simply Piano is an app that you can purchase and then they give you like a ton of different songs and actually it's self-taught they teach themselves I'm not looking at them becoming these amazing pianists I want them to do music because it just opens up so many opportunities but it also crosses the left and right hemisphere and it lights up the brain and especially for this middle school age you want to be building those neurons and the different thing, you wanna build the brain. You wanna build the brain. I'm not gonna to go too much into the science of it, but there's a lot of science that goes behind music. So I default to music on Simply Piano with the piano. My sons, both of them has also, believe it or not, have picked up singing. And my seventh grader has an amazing voice, soon to be seventh grader. I know he's gonna be going through the vocal change and I know that's a tough time, but once you have that ear for music, it just jumps right in. Trust me, I know. I've taught middle school boys how to sing before. They'll be able to flip right into it once they get into their, their man voice. Their changed voice, that's what you call it, the changed voice. With Simply Piano, we do it 30 minutes a day. There's a lot of classical pieces on there, so what I'll do is I'll assign them a couple of classical pieces that they have to complete and learn by, by a certain deadline. And other than that, they can kind of play around with some other ones that they want to learn. They also have different levels, so they have intermediate, advanced, and they can kind of pick out which level they're at. If they learn it at, you know, a beginner's level, they can always jump it up to intermediate to add some more of those chords and, and extra notes in there to make it a little little more full sounding. It's a great, it's a great app. We love it and we've been using it now for almost four years. History, we are using Truth Quest. Again, love it. I'm married to it. This is the Middle Ages that we're gonna be doing this year. We may jump into Renaissance a little bit. This book is amazing because number one, flexible. Number two, it, it pushes for primary sources. Number three, it, it challenges you to think from a Christian worldview. So here's what it does. So each section, you will get a little blurb, so to speak, that you can read to them. 
And then after you do that, you can pick out however many books you want on that subject. Now they'll have their grade level listed over on this side. So if you're teaching, you know, a younger child, an older child, you can get a book here or here. They also have a section, not on this page, but some will have a section of fiction books. Most of them are nonfiction, obviously, but sometimes you wanna get those fiction books. They'll also have audio visual, then uh, some books of activities that you could purchase or, you know, like easy to make playtime castle or make this model castle or paper dolls, like those kind of activities. Then you could also purchase some stuff online. There are worksheets to build up a binder, or you could get timelines, you could get some flashcards. They also have some amazing essays for those older kids to get them thinking outside of the box on these topics. This book in particular has 11 essays through the year. So for example, on Crusades, the question is, what were some of the results of the Crusades? How did they affect the Crusades, the Muslims, the Jews, and all of Europe, both then and now? So you can see this definitely is a challenge for high schoolers, but middle schoolers could even do these as well. They also give you, you know, in the back of the book, they'll give you an answer or some, some ideas on how to get this paper done. What's great is with the IEW that he's doing, all the structure and style, he's gonna be able to pull that into this and write a, a phenomenal essay, which we've actually done before, and I've seen that happen from him when he puts the work into it. I just have to make him write a paper on Elon Musk. Science this year, he is gonna be taking science at the co-op. He's going to be doing forensic science for seventh grade. I was really in a debate whether or not I was gonna put him into a general science class, Apologia general science, or if I was gonna put him into another fun, but challenging, rigorous, forensic science type class. So since, you know, he's been interested in politics and journalism and stuff like that, forensics I thought would be something kind of beneficial for him. You know, especially going into, it goes into some of the DNA. We don't have a book obviously right now because it's at the homeschool co-op. I will let you know when that book is assigned. The General Science Apologia book, I have skimmed through it. It is a lot of reading. He's gonna do apology when he gets to high school anyway. The physical science one is a little better and that's for the upper, upper elementary. And he may do eighth grade physical science because there is a teacher at the co-op that teaches it. The teacher's amazing, by the way. So that makes the class so much better. Apology is amazing in general. Usually a lot of people who do the apology at high school and middle school will tend to score really, really high on the club test and clip, clip out of the sciences for, for college. But I'm not thinking about that right now. What I'm thinking about is what's gonna work best for him and his personality, and we're going with forensics. Of course, there's a lot of other things that are going on, like he's going to be taking a PE class, he's going to be going to camp this summer. That's not next fall, that's this summer, but it's kind of, it's the end of July. And running club, we're looking at doing a running club for him. Boys should definitely stay active at this age. It keeps their brain going. And so I'm a big, big fan of staying physical fit, especially for this age. And I think we think other than that, we got it, we got it pretty much covered. Seventh grade. Whoop whoop. I love seventh grade. Actually, it's a fun, it's a very fun age. I do have a video on middle schoolers. So if you if you do have a seventh grade in middle school, which of course if you're watching this video at this point, you probably have a seventh grader. You gotta check out this video. I cards description box below. At the end of my video, probably put it there too. So I'm gonna close it and you'll see it in a second. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you liked it. Give me a thumbs up, share with other friends, and until then, I will see you in our next video. Bye.